A lot of the things that us humans do can affect the environments we live in and therefore affect the animals that we share the planet with. Some of the things that we do obviously negatively affect the planet, such as overfishing and overhunting, and of course pollution. There are also plenty of other things that us humans do that may seem like a good idea at first, but go on to negatively affect wildlife, and in some cases our mistakes can cause extinctions. In this video I will be going through a few of the biggest mistakes that us humans have made, as I will be going through three things that humans have done that have almost caused extinctions. The first mistake I will be covering today is the use of DDT. DDT is a colourless, tasteless and almost odourless crystalline chemical compound, and in the second half of World War II, it was used as an insecticide to stop the spread of malaria and typhus. DDT was a very effective way of killing pest insects, and did help to stop the spread of these insect-borne diseases. It was so effective in fact that the man who discovered it, Paul Hermann Muller, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1948. By 1945, DDT was available for public sale in the US, and it was marketed as a safe insecticide to use around your house or in your garden. It was used on such a large scale and was even sprayed in public places. This was of course a very bad idea, because not only can DDT make you suddenly ill, but it's considered to be a possible human carcinogen. Thanks to a large public outcry, DDT was eventually banned in 1972, but by then the damage had already been done. DDT had a massive negative impact on birds and aquatic life, and almost led to the extinction of some of the US's most iconic animals. Because DDT was so carelessly sprayed into the environment, it was very easy for native birds of prey to be exposed to DDT, and if they weren't exposed to it themselves, in most cases the prey that they fed on would have interacted with DDT. The most common effect of DDT on birds is that it causes their eggshells to be very thin. This meant that the shells couldn't properly contain the chicks, and led to massive declines in native bird populations populations. One of the worst affected species was the brown pelican, but the bald eagle was also famously very close to extinction. In the 1950s there were only thought to be 412 nesting pairs left, and overhunting really didn't help their situation. Eventually thanks to a ban on hunting, and also thanks to the ban of DDT, bald eagles have made a stunning recovery, and they are here to stay. As well as affecting bird life, it also affected aquatic creatures, as many hatcheries reported large die-offs in young trout. DDT was often sprayed across large water sources, mostly to get rid of immature mosquitoes. This of course would have been effective, but also affected the overall aquatic ecosystem, and therefore the fishing industry and the economy. So I think it's fair to say that DDT is one of the worst things that has ever happened to the American ecosystem. But our next inclusion on this list hasn't almost caused extinctions, because it has been linked with the extinction of many large aquatic creatures. I am of course talking about damming, and even though building a dam may seem like a good thing at first, it's one of the leading causes of extinctions of freshwater fish. At first, building a dam may seem like a very good idea. Most dams today are built to produce electricity, and it is one of the cleaner sources of electricity. But the building of dams can also be quite controversial, not only because of their effect on wildlife, but also because of global politics. If a very large river is dammed, it means that there's less flow going downstream. This not only affects the way that a river has flowed for thousands of years, but also directly affects people and their livelihoods. People rely on large rivers for fishing, and when the source of this river has been affected, it also affects the fishing as well. Some countries will build dams to help irrigate farmland, but these rivers go on to enter other countries, and these dams can go on to negatively affect their livelihoods, and of course cause some animal extinctions. Most large rivers contain migratory species, and some of these creatures start their lives in rivers, before eventually going out to sea, and in some cases coming back to breed and lay their eggs. If a dam is put along one of these rivers, they are simply not able to leave the river or get back into it. This often means that they are unable to breed and reproduce, and this of course has massive negative effects on their numbers. Some dams have built ways that fish can move over them, but in most cases they only really work for smaller fish, and the larger fish simply have no way through. One group of fish that is worst affected by dams are sturgeons. Sturgeons are some of the largest freshwater fish in the world, and many of them migrate to the sea before returning to rivers. In many cases when they can't bypass these dams they have no way of breeding, and this along with overfishing has caused massive declines in their numbers. One of the largest rivers in China is known as the Yangtze River, and this river was once home to a large array of wildlife. It has since been badly affected by pollution, and also by the Three Gorges Dam. This large dam has stopped many species from migrating, and is thought to have caused the extinction of the Chinese paddlefish. 
The Chinese paddlefish was a relative of the American paddlefish, and also all sturgeon species. It was one of the largest freshwater fish in the world, but thanks to pollution and the building of these dams, it is now thought to be extinct. Because these dams mostly affect fish, they also affect all the other predators that feed on these fish, such as river dolphins and birds of prey. Because these dams aren't realistically going to get destroyed, this unfortunately looks like it's going to be a problem that stays, and all we can do is avoid building more dams in the future. But finally we move on to the most obvious mistake on this list, that being whaling. People have been hunting whales as early as 875 AD, but by the 16th century it was at its peak. Whales were of course hunted for their meat and blubber, that could be turned into a type of oil that became increasingly important in the Industrial Revolution. Strangely, whaling survived into the 20th century, where whales were hunted with explosive harpoons. It's thought by the late 1930s more than 50,000 whales were killed annually, and this drove some species to near extinction. One of the species that was most affected by whaling was the colossal blue whale. The blue whale is the largest animal ever known to have existed, but despite this they were still not safe from us humans. Because of the blue whale's size, most predators tend to leave it alone, and it's thought that only orcas can take them down. For hundreds of years, most whalers would avoid the blue whale, simply because it was so large and possibly dangerous. But thanks to the introduction of explosive harpoons, it was now a lot easier to take down these whales, and they were killed at an astonishing rate. Between 1930 and 1931, it's thought that 30,000 blue whales were killed by whalers. To put that into perspective, that would completely wipe out today's population, as there's only thought to be around 10,000 to 25,000 blue whales in the wild. One of the other whale species that was badly affected was the humpback whale, and this was mainly due down to their coastal distribution. They were one of the easier whales to find, and therefore the easier whales to kill. At one point their North Atlantic populations dropped to as low as 700 individuals, and the future really looks bleak for these mammals. Thankfully in 1969, most countries agreed to a ban on whaling, but unfortunately not all of them did. Whaling is still something that happens in the present day, and it's not exactly like whales have fully recovered. Humpback whales still have a decreasing population, and if you go back 100 years there were over 100,000 more blue whales alive on this planet. This shows that they are nowhere near the population that they should be at, and really whaling should be left in the past. Since the ban on commercial whaling in 1986, over 40,000 large whales have been killed by Japan, Norway and Iceland, and the dolphins and porpoises aren't safe either. Our oceans are already in a bad state thanks to overfishing and plastic pollution, and hunting large marine mammals only makes this worse. But unfortunately it looks like we haven't learnt from our mistakes, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Of course there are plenty of other things that could have made it on this list, and I'm interested to see what you guys suggest in the comments. But that's about it for this video, thank you for watching, if you liked it please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.